Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're delving into the heart of Africa, specifically Rwanda, as the nation gears up for a pivotal moment, the upcoming presidential and parliamentary elections scheduled for July. These elections are of utmost significance, not just for Rwanda but for the broader African continent and the global community, as they could potentially reshape the political landscape of this small yet remarkable nation. Now, to fully grasp the dynamics of the upcoming elections, we need to take a brief sojourn into Rwanda's recent past. In the center of this historical narrative is President Paul Kagame, a figure who has been instrumental in steering Rwanda's course after the dark days of the 1994 genocide. This horrific event, which saw the massacre of an estimated 800,000 ethnic Tutsis and moderate Hutus in just about a hundred days, left deep scars on the nation's psyche. Emerging from this tragedy, Kagame assumed leadership and embarked on a path of reconciliation, stability, and economic growth. Under his stewardship, Rwanda has transformed from a nation torn apart by ethnic strife to one of the fastest-growing economies in Africa. Kagame's administration has been lauded for its efforts in improving health care, education, and women's empowerment, making Rwanda a beacon of development in the region. However, it's not just his domestic policies that have earned him international acclaim. Kagame has also been a vocal advocate for African unity and self-reliance, often challenging the status quo and pushing for reforms within regional and continental bodies. At the forefront of these elections is President Paul Kagame, a figure who has played a monumental role in reshaping Rwanda's trajectory since the tragic events of the 1994 genocide. His leadership has undoubtedly changed the face of Rwanda, but as we approach the elections, questions about his legacy, the state of democracy in Rwanda, and the future direction of the nation are increasingly coming to the fore. But more on that later. For now, let's delve deeper into the electoral race and the key players in the upcoming elections. But as with any election, there's always a contender. Frank Habeneza, leader of the Green Party, has stepped forward as Kagame's only known challenger. As the head of the Democratic Green Party of Rwanda, Habineza represents an alternative voice in the political landscape, striving to bring a new perspective to the table. His party, established in August 2009, champions environmental sustainability, social justice and democracy, aiming to create a political shift in the country. Habineza, a former journalist and diplomat, brings a unique blend of experience to the arena. His political journey began in 2009 when he left Kagame's Rwandan Patriotic Front to establish the Green Party. Since then, he has been a vocal critic of the government, advocating for political reform and freedom of expression. In May 2024, he took a significant step, officially declaring his candidacy for the presidency. This announcement has stirred a sense of anticipation in the electoral process. The question on everyone's mind is, can he pose a significant challenge to Kagame's long-standing dominance? Habanetsa officially declared his candidacy in May, bringing a sense of anticipation to the electoral process. Can he pose a significant challenge to Kagame's long-standing dominance? However, the road to these elections is not without controversy. Kagame's leadership, while praised globally, has faced mounting criticism, particularly in the areas of political opposition suppression and media restrictions. Paul Kagame, a figure admired for his pivotal role in Rwanda's post-genocide recovery, has been at the helm of the nation's governance for over two decades. However, beneath the surface of this remarkable recovery, there are rumblings of discontent and accusations of authoritarianism. Human rights organizations have been increasingly vocal, expressing concerns over the suppression of political opposition. Many of Kagame's potential rivals find themselves dealing with legal challenges, imprisonment, or even exile. The lack of a robust opposition raises questions about the true nature of democracy in Rwanda, and it's not just political opponents who face challenges. Journalists, too, have been affected. In a world where information is power, the control of media by the government has raised eyebrows. A thriving democracy is often characterized by a vibrant and free media landscape. However, in Rwanda, critics argue that this is not the case. The government's grip over media outlets has sparked concerns about the limited space for dissenting voices and alternative narratives. The lack of media freedom is seen by some as a mechanism to control the narrative and keep any criticism of the government under wraps. This, critics argue, 
stifles any hopes of a truly democratic process, reducing the elections to a mere formality rather than a reflection of the people's will. In the international arena, these controversies have fueled debates about the trade-offs between stability and democracy. While Kagami's leadership has undoubtedly brought about stability and economic growth, the question remains at what cost? If the price is the suppression of dissent and control of media, is it a price worth paying? As we inch closer to the elections, these controversies continue to cast a shadow over the process. Will they impact Kagami's chances of securing another term, or will they be swept under the rug of economic progress and stability? And then, there's the issue of media control. Critics argue that a free and vibrant media is crucial for a thriving democracy, but the Rwandan government's control over media outlets has sparked concerns about the limited space for dissenting voices and alternative narratives. As we analyze the political landscape in Rwanda, it's essential to understand the complexities that shape the nation's journey. The suppression of political opposition and media restrictions raises questions about the fairness and inclusivity of the upcoming elections. With President Paul Kagame's long-standing dominance in the seemingly controlled media environment, one might easily speculate a victory for the incumbent. His achievements in stabilizing Rwanda post-genocide and fostering economic growth are undeniable, and these successes have gained him significant support both domestically and internationally. However, this election isn't just about choosing a leader, it's about the democratic health of Rwanda. The ability of Frank Habaneza and the Green Party to contest this election is a testament to some level of political pluralism, even if it's limited. Habaneza's candidacy adds a layer of competition, bringing a different perspective to the political discourse and presenting voters with an alternative. Yet the concerns over political opposition suppression and media control cannot be ignored. These issues not only impact the upcoming elections but also Rwanda's democratic journey. A truly democratic society thrives on the diversity of voices and the freedom to express dissenting views. The extent to which these factors will influence the election results remains to be seen. Moreover, the international community's reaction to the elections will also be interesting to observe. Will they endorse the results? Or will the concerns over democratic practices prompt a more critical stance? Looking ahead, the elections will undoubtedly play a pivotal role in shaping Rwanda's political future. The question remains, will Kagame secure another term, or will the Green Party's Frank Habanitsa challenge the status quo and pave the way for a new era? And now, as we eagerly await the outcome in July, the world watches to see how these elections will shape Rwanda's political future. Will Kagame secure another term, or will the Green Party's Frank Habaneza pave the way for a new era? Only time will tell. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Rwanda's upcoming elections. We've journeyed through the historical backdrop that shaped Rwanda's political landscape, met the key players, and delved into the controversies that have stirred international attention. As the nation gears up for this pivotal moment, the world watches with bated breath. Will long-standing President Paul Kagame secure another term, or will Frank Habaneza of the Green Party usher in a new era? The road to these elections is fraught with challenges from suppressing political opposition to media restrictions. These issues raise critical questions about the fairness and inclusivity of the electoral process. As we eagerly await the outcome in July, let's continue the conversation. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to, and hit that notification bell for more insightful content. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and until next time, I'm signing off. Before we wrap up, it's crucial to shed light on a deeply intertwined issue, the human rights situation in Rwanda, especially in relation to political opposition. The suppression of political opposition in Rwanda is a grave concern. Opposition parties face immense obstacles, from intimidation to legal hurdles, making it difficult for them to operate freely and effectively. There have been disturbing reports of opposition figures being detained without trial and in some cases, disappearing without a trace. These incidents cast a long shadow over the electoral process and raise serious questions about the government's commitment to democratic principles. Freedom of speech is another area of concern. Journalists, bloggers, and activists who dare to criticize the government often find themselves targeted. This climate of fear stifles open dialogue and prevents citizens from expressing their opinions freely. Allegations of voting irregularities in past presidential and legislative elections further undermine public trust. 
These claims, coupled with the aforementioned issues, have attracted international scrutiny. The world is watching, and many are calling for a thorough investigation into these allegations. Rwanda's judiciary is another focal point of international concern. Its independence, or lack thereof, is a subject of heated debate. Critics argue that the judiciary is heavily influenced by the government, effectively making it an extension of the executive. While President Kagame's supporters point to Rwanda's need for stability, unity, and economic growth, the high incidence of human rights violations cannot be overlooked. The international community continues to call for reforms to ensure genuine political participation, freedom of expression, and an independent judiciary. As we anticipate the upcoming elections, these aspects of Rwanda's political landscape deserve our attention and consideration.